Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to continue our introduction to fly fishing by talking about fly fishing flies. We can divide flies into two major categories, either a dry fly or a wet fly. A dry fly is a, a fly designed to float a, 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 a on top of the water. A wet fly is one that sinks, sometimes all the way to the bottom, sometimes just mid-column. We can <clears throat> also divide flies into aquatic or terrestrials. Aquatic, as we learned in the uh, last unit, are insects, bugs, critters that fish eat that naturally live in the water and then the terrestrials are things that naturally live on land but find themselves unfortunately in water and shortly in a fish's stomach. When you're tying or designing flies you can follow three different styles of flies. Some of them are realistic that we saw in the image of the nymphs. The one in the upper left hand corner was fake. There was a hook in it. But it was tied in a realistic fashion so that it looked ex almost exactly like the real thing. People who do these are just absolutely fabulous you know, artists and fly tires. There's the impressionistic style. These are things that are designed to kind of look like a grasshopper. I mean, you can pick it up and say, oh, that looks like a grasshopper. I mean, it, it gives you the impression of that bug without actually looking exactly like it. Then there's suggestive type flies. These are things that are tied not to necessarily represent any particular style of fly, but rather to suggest that this is something that fish would eat. And there's a whole bunch of flies that, that, that are, are like that. There are a whole bunch of flies. There are thousands and thousands of flies. There are encyclopedia volumes filled with different fly tying patterns. It's, it's incredible. We have been tying flies for, well, literally, if we go back to uh, Dame Gillian and uh, the treatise of fishing with an angle in 1496, she talks about how to make your own flies to imitate different types of insects that uh, uh, trout and salmon and brim uh, and even carp uh, would be attracted to. Probably the best place to really study about flies is in a fly fishing catalog that has a really good fly selection. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a, a demo video on this. But here we can see over on the right hand side we have up here at the top right a dry fly. This is designed to sit up on top of the, the water. I believe that that is a, an irresistible. Um, it imitates something, probably like a damselfly. Down below it is a bass popper. Yeah, the same artificial type lures that we talked about in class. We have these in fly fishing. You can see right here, it has this, this cup open cupped face. Uh, we, we saw that in the uh, Lake Griffey bluegill popper uh, and also the, the jitterbug would have this type of, of face. Uh, right here is the, the hook. This is a, a heavy piece of monofilament line that acts as a weed guard. And of course the, the hook, this is probably a, oh, probably a number one, maybe a number two. Uh, the head is cork usually, sometimes plastic. These are rubber legs coming off of it. A bit of hackle, which is um, 
Hackle is the back of a chicken's neck. Or you could also refer to hackle on a dog. You know, if you if a dog is coming by you and he's growling at you and his hackles are standing up, that's the hair uh, on the back of the neck is just standing straight up. On a chicken, we harvest that and then turn it into, into flies. And then here we have uh, some feathers uh, forming some type of a tail. You could roughly say that this is an imitation of a frog. There's tons of different patterns, different colorations, different styles for, for this type of popper. Uh, yes, these are incredibly effective. Now down here we have an example of a wet fly. This in fact would be a streamer. A streamer is any type of fly that is designed to imitate a bait fish. So we've got the eye right up here. Uh, we have uh, some, some white feather down here. Some crystal flash which is a, a plastic mylar type material that's designed to well, flash, kind of pulsate, incredibly effective fly. These eyes are probably, on this this particular pattern, uh, what we call lead dumbbell eyes. They look like a really, 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 really tiny little dumbbell that's made out of lead. And it's very easy to tie onto a hook. This gives a hook weight. And once you paint the dumbbell, you can create an eye right here. Notice that the hook is upturned. So you can cast this out, and at, during a retrieve, this is going to kind of float and flutter through the, 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 uh, the, the water. Uh, a couple quick little strips, and this will dart one side to the other. You can take and bounce this off the bottom. It's very unlikely that it's going to get get uh, uh, hung up because of this upturned hook. This is an illustration of a typical life cycle of a of a fly of a of an insect. We start off down here with this this mayfly nymph. This is what the the trout are looking for what the carp are looking for what the bluegill are looking for, for. as this this nymph uh, ages and matures it will will, will start to transform uh, as an emerger where it is coming up to the the surface a lot of time this this rise from the bottom up to the surface of the of the water is a prime time for for fish to, to to nail them. Once they make it to the surface, they start to break out of their their nymph shell, and they have to sit at the surface and dry their newfound wings. This is referred to as an emerger, and and trout really 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 key in on this also bluegill again largemouth bass aren't really going to care that much about this yeah if there's one there they'll come up and and and, and eat it um, but but tr trout and bluegill are really key in on, on these guys and so as this guy is just sitting here resting on the surface film of the water drying his wings before he he takes off prime target just this is called uh, fish feeding on the surface, where you just see these little, little, you know, little pops, little disturbances in the uh, yeah, in the water. Sometimes it looks like it's raining that there's so many fish feeding on on the emergers. So once these guys' uh, wings dry out, they'll fly. They'll fly around in circles a few times. They'll look for a mate. They'll 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 breed and then they die. And as they fall back onto the water, they're called spent, for obvious reasons. And fish will come up and eat them. So, th this guy's entire life cycles revolves around being eaten at a certain stage of his life. Here are some terms associated with um, uh, lakes, rivers, and shores. 
I'm not going to specifically test you on any of these. I think it's important to to know these. You will see these terms um, in regular life. Um, uh, literal is relating any uh, shoreline around an ocean or a sea. And the U.S. Navy has recently launched a series of literal warfare ships. And these are ships that are specifically designed to operate near shore in a, a, an ocean environment. Uh, riparian. This refers to areas around streams and rivers. Riverine, specifically around larger rivers. Uh, you may remember uh, there was a, a, a riverine force in Vietnam uh, during the Vietnam War, uh, riverine craft that the U.S. Navy uh, uh, manned. So ponds, lakes, uh, oh, foot acre, this is good. How do you measure the size of a body of water? Well, we typically do this in acres, which is we use for, for land measurement, but we can also use it for, for uh, lake and reservoir measurement. A acre foot is the quantity of water that is one foot deep covering one acre. And so if you're operating a power plant uh, like Lake Monroe, they have to know how much water is in the lake, and so they can measure that in uh, acre foots.